So um, stu- I'm not going to go ahead with an introduction because we'll cut straight into it. Go, <laughs> go, 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 go ahead, Stu. Um, thank you, Charles. Uh, just in, in terms of squads and you know players coming in and out, how difficult is that um, for you as captain to manage that particular process? Yeah, I mean, naturally, the, the, these they were the T20 series and this series now there's been um, some new faces around, but I find that really exciting, to be honest. Um, guys have been doing really well in domestic cricket and uh, through that form been given opportunities to be one in the environment and two potentially making debuts. So uh, I think it's great for our system and it's great for those players to, to get that experience and take that then potentially back to their franchise and, and come back as better cricketers. Um, something Rob spoke about that's <laughs> very specific to both the limited overs formats was the importance of um, building depth with all-rounders. You've got Dion is back um, and Mishlali is a new face. I just wanted your impressions on, on Mishlali, um, both from what you've seen mm. in the training and, and also just personally. Yeah, we've, we've spent a, a little bit of time together now. Um, but obviously, I, I've played against him, I think, once or twice as well, and um, super impressed with, with how he goes about his work. I think probably the biggest thing that stands out for me is he's quite a young guy, but he, he thinks about the game in a great way. So uh, really mature, I would say, for his age and um, pretty streetwise with, with when it comes to his plans and, and adapting to sort of each bat and condition. So um, a great opportunity for him to be here. Definitely deserves it. He's been doing really well. And... Um, it's it's exciting for us to to have a new face like him in the in the squad. In ter- in terms of you know these guys that are going to get opportunities, um, Nandre got a quick look the other day. Courtney, will, I presume, will get another one because the bowling looks <laughs> quite light. Um, what are your expectations from 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 these players? Look, number one and we are the most important is not to put any pressure on them. Um, it's opportunities for them to do what they've been doing so well in the domestic scene and to try to replicate that in international cricket. Yes, the opposition is going to be tougher, but um, ultimately it's it's the ball or the bat in their hand and they give it their best crack. So each person that's here that's um, sort of new to the environment, like I've mentioned, has, has deserved their call-up. And um, when if, if they get opportunities to make debuts, it's, it's more the enjoyment, the experience that they can gain from it. And ultimately still competing in, in their best way. Um, by no means are we going to just sort of accept that it's a debut and these guys are they're competitors as, as South Africans as we are and um, they'll, they'll want to put a good foot forward. Aiden, just a couple of questions from Fidos. Um <coughs> Is Tony DeZorzi going to open the batting and what can we expect from him? Yeah, it, it looks like it, to be fair. Um, he's been playing really well for Western Province and a nice positive brand of cricket from his side. So he seems excited about it. The, the coach seems really excited about it as well and um, a fantastic opportunity for him. I think he did play against Netherlands or West Indies um, and we, we really enjoyed what we saw from, from Tony. So another opportunity for him to express himself and, and try to be uh, the best version of, of Tony Dezorzi, ultimately. Now, Andile seems to be making the most um, of this opportunity. What's changed about him uh, from his first few stints as an international player? Um, it's quite a tough question. I don't think much has changed. Look, he's he's certainly training really hard. Uh, he's, always, he's always been a hard worker, though, and I think he, he almost sees himself now as uh, not a, a young guy in the team anymore. I think it's more f- more a uh, a guy with a bit more responsibility, and I think he's taken that responsibility on really well. So um, he's finished games for us with a bat. He, he's bowled some crucial spells in the middle overs for us, and um, it is exciting to have Andy playing that sort of cricket for us and, and putting his hand up. Is the next challenge for the ODI side to find a few reliable all-rounders, and how uh, will they go about uh, doing that? Um, I think there's a lot in this squad, and potentially guys that aren't here at the moment. So there are great options for us around the country and um, guys have been putting their hands up for for those positions. So that's ultimately ultimately what it's about. It's creating that healthy competition within the system and um, rewarding guys for for doing well. So we've got a lot of all-rounders and they're all on the slightly younger side of things. So that's that's a big blessing for us and um, hopefully can can serve the Proteus for for many years to come. 
just on you personally, um, I think you're the, uh, you and Kesh might be the only ones that are playing all, f all three formats here. Um, you know, other guys are on breaks and some guys are going in and out. Um, are you looking to play this entire ODI series and, and just how, you know, while everybody else gets breaks <laughs> here, you are going full tilt? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it, to be honest. Um, initially, tomorrow is a fantastic day in, in Pink Day and then um, any series against India is huge as well, so um, I'm excited to be a part of it. We'll, we'll hopefully play all three, and um, that's the plan. So, um, yeah, up for it. I think I had a nice break off the World Cup. It was about two weeks or so and got some time away from the game, and uh, I'm feeling fresh and ready to, to keep playing. So, um, yeah, that's where, we are, that's where we are now, and um, hopefully this series can, can go well for us. Just on India, um, obviously <coughs> you know, they had a great World Cup. Um, there's a few new faces with them as well. W what are your expectations from them um, in this series? Yeah, they. I think they can almost field three sides nowadays and, and really compete with the best in the world. So um, we've seen their squad there. There are slightly newer faces in the squad, but um, having said that, we probably have something similar as well in terms of um, some new faces. So. Um, it's exciting to have that. It's an opportunity to have a look at players and um, to, to part the ways forward going into into 50 over cricket in the future. So expect them to be young, full of energy, um, excited about the opportunities that they're getting. And um, yeah, the, I'm sure they'll bring a lot of intensity and, and the things that they normally bring. So um, we focus a lot on ourselves and on, on terms of being ready and being switched on and being sharp. and. And we believe if we're operating at that sort of right level, then uh, the rest of the things sort of take care of themselves to an extent. And then um, just one from, or two from Telford. Uh, what did the team learn from the T20s that you can apply in the ODI series? Uh, sure. I think we, we played really well in that first game. It was a really good wicket and uh, the bowlers did well too restrict them to the total that they ended up getting and um, through doing that I think we got a few lessons um, and, and taught, or got taught a few lessons by just observing that and, and how we can potentially squeeze more in the middle over so that's probably one thing we can take forward and then um, from a batting point of view expecting obviously a lot of spin from them um, so we're going to have to as batters make sure our, our game plans against their spinners are up to scratch and, and looking forward to, to that challenge. And then it is South Africa's first ODI since the World Cup. Are the team over the disappointment? Uh, suppose it's an individual question, but um, yeah, it's never nice to exit a World Cup like that. I uh, thought we had something really good going and um, that does still filter though into, into this team from, a, from the, the good side of things. So. I would say most guys are over it. I think the, the nature of cricket nowadays is, is it's so busy and uh, the schedule so so hectic that you you almost forced to move on as quick as possible. So I think we we're pretty much past it and and looking forward to to the series against India. Uh, mine is just the final one, and it's on Pink Day. Uh, obviously, something that you know has got its own history now. Um, still, something that's very special, and and, and why for the players. Yeah, it's, it is really special. Um, it's a nice hype that that builds up around Joburg for the game. And um, obviously the, the reason behind Pink Day is, is what makes it extra special. So the guys always look forward to it. We, we generally get a really good crowd and um, been fortunate enough as a team to, to have done well in Pink Day. So we, I think we've got a pretty decent record. And um, tomorrow is hopefully another good day for us in, in the pink kit, supporting a, a really good cause. Great, thank you very much, um, Aidan. Stu, that concludes today's press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>